Hi there. We're going to be looking at the fourth part of the Module 3 Digital Notebook. This is going to focus primarily on slope and y-intercept and features of lines. So let's jump right in. If you need the link to the Digital Notebook, I'm going to be sure and put it in the description so that you can download a copy of it. Um, but if you'll go to uh, slide number two, you can click on the fourth session, which is the one we're working on today. And um, then we'll go all the way down to slide number 23, where this section starts. So once you have your digital notebook open, you're going to slide 23. And then let's hop over to slide 24 and just look at a, the formula here. So we have y equals mx plus b. This may sound familiar to you from maybe previous math classes, um, but we know that m, and notice m is the number in front of the x, m is the slope. Now m can be positive or negative or a fraction, um, but whatever that number is in front of x, that is our slope. And then the b value here, that's the thing that's added or subtracted, that is what we call the y-intercept, or that's where the line touches the y-axis. Now, all of this is contingent upon, we have to have it y equals first. So let us do a few examples all on slide 25 by putting this formula into practice. So if you look at slide 25, let's focus here on the first equation, the y equals 3x, okay? Now we have y equals, so we're good to use that mx plus b form. Now, m, the number in front of x, is 3 in this case. So that tells me that my slope is 3. I can tell that just from looking at the equation. Then I need a plus b part. Well, friends, there's no plus or minus there. That tells me b is 0. So that means that this line, if I were to look at a graph of it, it would touch the y-axis at 0, and then it would have a slope of 3. Now remember, that slope is a steepness or a flatness of a line, so it tells us how steep it is. Okay, let's look at this second one here. Um, y equals negative 9 halves x plus 5. We have it y equals, so we're good to look at just the uh, number in front of x, and we can see that number in front of x is negative 9 halves. So let's type that here. That's going to be my slope, negative 9 halves. And then my b, what I'm adding to the equation, that's my y-intercept, which would be 5. Let's look at one more. Now, if you want to try this one on your own, you can pause the video and try this one on your own and then unpause it, come back and take a look at how I did it. So y equals 4 thirds x plus 5. So we have y equals, so we're good to use the y equals mx plus b. We see the number in front of x is 4 thirds, so that's going to be my slope. And my, it's being added, plus 5, that tells me why y intercept is 5. Now I'm going to come back to this guy right here in just a moment, but let's look at this graph one, okay? I want to see if I can tell the slope from the graph. And I'm going to grab a pen here, and I'm going to point out a couple of points. This point right there, and this point right there. Now, these two points are important because they're going to help us calculate the slope. Now, the way we do the slope when we look at a graph is we count how far we had to rise or fall. We always start with a point on the left, and then we determine, did we go up and then over, or did we go down and then over? And you can see from this when we actually go down. So let me count them. One, two, three, four. We actually went down four. Okay? And then I ran one to get to this point. Let me show you it again with these two points. Okay? So I went down one, two, three, four and I ran one. So I'm going down four, over one, down four, over one, down four, over one. We get the idea, right? So I want to put in here my, uh, my slope is down four. Well, the way I say down four is to go negative four, 
and then I run one, so that's over one, which of course I could just write as negative four. So I'm counting my rise or my fall, and then of course my run over. Now, my B value is a little tricky here because I don't see where it touches this Y axis, but I could count, okay? So count with me, let me grab another pin here, count with me. If I were to go from this point right here, I would have to go down four and over one, and I would go down four and over one. So I've got to go down four and four again. So I've got to go, so this is one, two, three, four, five. And then remember, I got to go down four and over one and then down four and over one. So I've got to go down five and then eight more. So that means my B value is going to be negative 13. Now that's kind of tricky. I don't know about you. That's kind of tricky. All right. Now, um, let's do one more like that. And this one, I'm going to focus on this um, equation, but I want to do it with the Desmos graphing calculator. Um, in the description, I've put a link for the Desmos graphing calculator if you want to use it. I'm going to take this equation and type it into my graphing calculator here. So I've got 3x plus 2y equals 4. Okay. And I want to do the slope first. Now you see Desmos has already highlighted a couple of points for me. That was really nice of them um, highlighting a point right here for me. And then they did one right there, but I, I think I'm going to use this guy right here because it's an exact value. Um, so let me highlight those. I'm going to use this point and I'm going to use this point and we'll do our counting for our slope, right? We're going to go down one, down two, down three. So we're down three, and then we run one, two. So we actually go down three and run two. Let's write that for our slope back in our notebook. So that's down three. Remember, that's going to be negative three, and then run two. Okay. Now, let's look and see if we can look at the graph and find the y-intercept. So when I look at the graph, I'm looking for where does it cross this line, and it looks like it crosses this line here at 2, right? Crosses the y-axis at 2. So that's our B value here. I love that Desmos graphing calculator is completely free. You might want to bookmark it for this module as you're working through some of the practice problems. It's a really, really nice tool. Okay, so let's go to slide 26 then. And on slide 26, I've actually put a link for the Desmos graphing calculator right there if you want. Now, friends, what you might want to do for this one is I'm going to look at the y-intercept because I see that my b values, that's negative 1, my b value here is 2, my b value here is negative 4. Are you following me on how I can see what my b value is? That b value is 0, this b value is 1. And let me move my video out of the way. There we go. And you can see that this B value is negative three. So I'm going to look at these graphs here and see if I can tell what the B value is. And then I will drag it to its right place. So let's see the Y intercept for this one that touches the Y axis at one. So I'm going to look for the B value of one. Ah, this one right here. So let me drag it to its right spot. Okay, look for your B value. This graph touches the y-axis at, looks like negative three down there. So I'm gonna put it in the right spot for having a B value of negative three, touching the y-axis at negative three. Now, if you wanna pause the video and try the others on your own, you're welcome to do that and then we'll check them. That's a great tool to see if you're understanding this. So the B value here is negative four. Mm -hmm. So that one's going to go with this one. Look at that number that's being added or subtracted to determine what your B value is. Here, my B value, it looks like my graph is touching the y-axis at negative 1. So I'm going to drag that graph into its right spot with the B value of negative 1. Because here, look at the graph. Where does it touch the y-axis? That's at 2. So you can drag that one to the right spot with a B value of 2. 
two being added to the equation, so what the b value we're talking about. And then this guy touches the y-axis at zero. So I know that that's going to be where nothing is being added or subtracted, okay? So I hope that helps you with identifying the graph to the equation if you're just looking at the b values, okay? All right, let's go on to slide 27 now. We have a little bit more graphing, but this time I want you to notice that I can't just look at the equation to tell the b value. This time I actually have to graph it mm -hmm. because these equations aren't y equals. All right, so again, there on the screen, I have the Desmos graphing calculator for you. If you want to open that up, I'm going to be using it. And what I'm going to do is actually like move my graphs apart from each other, if you're okay with that. Um, and I'm doing that so I can see them all at once. <laughs> and that way, when I put in my equation, I can pick out the one that is correct. So let's put in our Desmos 4x minus y equals 5. So I got 4x minus y equals 5. Oh, and I need to clear my, my little dots. Okay, so point out a couple of things on this graph, friends. Notice that it touches the y-axis at negative 5. And I want you to notice that it leans to the right. So when I look at my graphs back in the digital notebook, I'm looking for it to touch the y-axis at negative five, and I want it to lean to the right, and that's this guy. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do x plus y equals three. So I'm gonna clear this equation, and I'll put x plus y equals three in there. So notice this one touches the y-axis at three, and it leans to the left. So let's go back to our graph. Touches the y-axis at three, and it looks like it leans to the left. That's this one. So I'll put that there. Okay, now if you wanna pause and try the other four, you're welcome to do that, and then start your, um, unpause it so you can see, check your answers. I'm gonna do two x minus five y equals 15. So two x minus five y equals 15 looks like this. Touches the y-axis down there at negative three, and it leans to the right. So let's see, touches the y-axis at negative three, and leans to the right. I need to move this guy so I can see what's going on with it. Okay, so it looks like that's this one. Okay, um, then I'll do x minus three y equals nine. x minus three y equals nine. That looks very similar to the last one, right? Touches the y-axis at negative three. So that's this one. Okay, then three x plus y equals four. You can put that one in your Desmos calculator. Okay, and that touches the y-axis at four and leans to the left. So that's this one, it's pretty steep too. And then my last one would have to be this one, okay? So what I want you to get from this is you can use your Desmos calculator to get a picture of the graph, and then you can make your decisions, looking, focusing in on the y-intercept, and then is the graph leaning to the left or the right? After you look at left and right, then look at the steepness of the line to see if you can match them, okay? All right, one more slide for this one, and that is number slide 28. Um, so we want to extend the arrow to match the description of the line on the left, um, with the equation or the graph of the line on the right. Okay, so we're looking for a line with, with the orange one here, a line with the slope of three-fifths and a y-intercept of negative two. Okay, so if I look at this one, y-intercept's not negative two. Not really sure about this guy. I could put it in my calculator. Um, let's do that. So I'll do 50x minus 5y equals negative 75, I think it was. Yeah. Okay, so that's not touching the graph at negative 2 on the y-axis. So that one won't work. y equals 2. Hmm. Now, I know with the y-intercept of negative 2, that would be a add or subtract 2 at the end. So that's, and it has to have a slope. So if you want to look at y equals 2, you can definitely do that in your calculator. It's the green line here. So that doesn't touch the y-axis at negative two. So I know that one's not gonna work here. What about this guy? 
It's like it does touch the y-axis at negative 2, so that's good. So that's a possibility. And let's check this last one, y equals 2x. In my calculator, that's the purple one. And notice it did not touch at y equals negative 2. So I know this orange one goes with this guy. Okay. Um, line with a rate of change of 10. Well, we haven't talked a lot about rate of change yet, so let me come back to that one. Let's go with this one. A line with a slope of 0. Line with a slope of 0. Now, a slope of 0 means we don't rise or fall in the graph at all. We don't rise or fall. So this guy, he rises a lot. So that one can't be a slope of zero. Now my other three I have on my calculator, so let's look. So the blue one, this one has a rise to it, so that wouldn't work. Y equals two is the green one. That doesn't have any rise or fall with it, does it? And that means that my green one, which is Y equals two, is my answer for this one. Funny that it's also the green arrow Okay, um, line with a rate of change of 2 and a y-intercept of the origin. Well, I don't, haven't talked about rate of change yet, but I do know a y-intercept at the origin. So let's look at this graph. It does not have a y-intercept at the origin. Remember, that's the middle of the axes here. And let's look at my blue one and purple one, which are the ones I have left. Looks like the purple one does cross that origin, that middle of the graph. So we're going to pull the purple one for this one. And oh, the purple one was the y equals 2x. So we'll drag that here. Great. All right, we have two more to go. We have this graph and we have this equation. So we have one with a line with an undefined slope. And then over here, we have a line with a rate of change of 10 and a y-intercept at 15. So this guy right here is not touching the y-axis at 15. So the purple one has to go for this equation. Let me say that again. This graph is not going to have a y-intercept of 15. It's not even going to touch the y-axis. So if this one requires a y-intercept, it has to be this equation. And then the yellow one would have to go for this one. So friends, I'm using some process of elimination there based on the words that I do know. I do know the slope and I do know the, what the y-intercept is. I'm also using my graphing calculator to help me with the equations to be able to see what the graph looks like if it touches the y-axis at a certain point, okay? So I hope it helps you with these uh, four slides that we're doing as part four of the digital notebook. Be sure that you click on the Google form here and complete it um, as part of your engagement. And thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.